Welcome back to Forecast Lab. It is Tuesday, April 6th, and we've got a powerful weather system emerging from the Southern Rockies. The surface map at this time shows a 994 millibar low. That appears to be centered maybe a little bit east or west of this position in southeastern Colorado near Lamar where we have 994.8 millibars. You can see this wedge of very dry air. This forms the elevated mixed layer that rides over the top of the tropical air mass and that does tend to form the capping inversion. Now we can see the dry line is definitely set up. 60s dew points in Wichita contrasting with 43 to the west and the differences are even stronger down in Texas. Further out to the west we've got a cold front which has passed Albuquerque and we're going to take a closer look at that in a minute. And then out to the east, 80s all the way up into southeastern Minnesota with the warm sector heading way up into the Great Lakes region. And then just a quick look up to the north, not very much going on. And then up in Alaska, yeah, they're very cold for this time of year. Lots of single digits and even a few below zero readings on the north slope there. This is an unseasonably cold air mass and we got to remember that this is early April. They should be warming up around this time, but that's not really happening. All right, so for the Great Plains, we're going to do a little bit of surface mesoanalysis. Pretty easy to pick out where that surface cyclone is. You can find that cyclone right there where we have the spiraling of the winds into that center right there. The cold front, that's going to extend southward from that low all the way down through Kansas, about like that, and then down into New Mexico, roughly like that. And you'll notice that we transition from 87 up at Pampa, 86 at Amarillo, and then down to 82 at Delhart and 76 at Clayton. So a definite cool down back behind that cold front. So the dry sector, yeah, that's going to be pretty warm. And then the dry line itself, that's going to be located about like this. And you notice it divides the upper 50s and lower 60s dew points from drier readings out to the west. And then up to the north, we have the warm front, and that's going to run about like that. So those are the features we're going to be looking for on the satellite. And there's a look at that. Oklahoma and Kansas conditions are fairly dry along that dry line. Just not much low cloud field. You have to go pretty well east of the dry line to get into the better moisture. But, you know, that's pretty common in these springtime situations. Further to the north along the cold front, this appears to be some new convection going up. It does look kind of high based. And let's take a look further north. Checking out Nebraska there, and you can see the spiraled appearance of the cloud field. So the cold front, that's going to extend from the surface low right in that area there. And then the dry line, that's not quite as apparent, but that's going to run something like that. And then the warm front, yeah, that's coming north along that other boundary. So our rich tropical moisture, that's out here to the east. Then we have cold air advection, isentropic lift north of the surface low. And then I think down in Kansas, it looks like there's some sort of boundary here that we haven't quite resolved just yet. The cirrus patch that tells me there might have been some shower activity through that area. Yeah, in fact, there it is. Some little weak, mushy anvils coming out of the Emporia area. So there may be a little bit of a cold pool down there at the surface. Now another feature that we see is out there along the front range in Colorado. Look at that. Anvils going up. Well, those anvils are not tapping the rich tropical moisture, so they are going to be kind of high-based. 
And with respect to that, it looks like there's some fairly stout vertical motion, probably a very strong short wave moving through that region, helping to produce those showers. The Denver radar not really showing much of anything. I guess those are some showers on the front range right there. However, not really organized and it's definitely high based. Certainly no warnings or anything like that at this time. There's the Grand Island radar, south central Nebraska, not really showing much except for some warm advection showers there. So why are we looking at this? Well, take a look at where it is. See, it's just south of that bend there in the interstate. So referring back to the satellite, the radar is going to be located right there. So that's well out in the tropical air mass and quite a ways east of the cold front and the dry line. So why is that important? Well, if we switch over to base velocity and pick out a higher tilt, we can zoom right in on that radar and get a look at the wind profile in the lower couple thousand feet of the atmosphere. So we can see that moisture streaming north. If we pick out the zero line, it's running about like this right there. So in the very lowest levels, the winds are going to be out of 160 and those back very gently to about 190 at a height of about 2,500 feet AGL. I'm getting that off the bottom of the screen there because when you bring the cursor away from the radar, the beam height increases. So what we see here, not a whole lot of shear. If we were looking at very strong SRH with strong backing of the winds, I would want to see that zero line doing something a little sharper, kind of like that. But that's not what we're seeing today. But certainly a strong increase in the winds there, 35 knots being indicated right off the surface. And then taking a look further south, we'll go to Dodge City and see if we can see anything along that cold front. Sometimes we can pick out fine lines and yeah, I think that could be one there. Spectrum width will sometimes pick that stuff up a little bit better. So that can give you a location for the cold front. So we can take a map like that and plot that line that we saw. It runs about like that. And that corresponds very well to the position of the dry line. So that's that feature we're seeing right there. And then further to the west, I think we're seeing the cold front running something like that there. And Dodge City right in between there with a southwest wind off in the moist sector. Very strong southeast winds, 30 gusting to 35 there at Great Bend, and a much different profile off to the west there with the cold air spilling in from Colorado. SPC, they've got a slight risk. Obviously, this is going to be along and ahead of the cold front and dry line. Out there, just south of the warm front, pretty much where it gets into some of those lower heights aloft, where the capping is probably a little bit weaker. 2% tornado risk kind of fills in a little bit better where some of that might be happening. Looks like it's centered right there on Concordia. No watches in effect at this time. But they're thinking about it. There's a mesoscale discussion there from, this looks like just a little bit west of Concordia. And they're looking at some sort of watch box possible, maybe in the next one or two hours. And we can cheat and go to the high resolution rapid refresh to see how things will evolve, which is fine, but I strongly recommend that you hold off on the models until you've done that workup. Because once you start looking at the forecast solutions, that will tend to bias your thinking. And it's better to start with a very solid analysis. And let me just run this forward. I haven't even looked at this yet, so let's check it out. This is that warm air advection stuff. We know about that already. It's going for some early convection up there near the low pressure region. 
and right around 23Z, it's got development down the line, looks like just east of Russell, west of Concordia, and all the way down towards the Great Bend area. So obviously, you know, this is probably what's going to unfold. So Interstate 70, there's probably quite a few chasers out there at this moment waiting, waiting for things to fire. And then we see the evolution of what looks like a cold pool driven system. You can see those little boundaries pushing out from the main convective towers. So very likely cells will be undercut. Tail end stuff will have some potential, so I'd probably want to go south of I-70 if I was out there. And then towards the middle of the night, just a lot of elevated convection around the Kansas City region. And there's some trace of that cold front moving in Oklahoma City late tonight. And then we can take a look at the environment favoring these cells. I'm going to grab a sounding about one county to the east. And we see some very steep lapse rates. Looks like the SRHs are not too bad either. The DCAPES, however, look at that almost 1300. So that there is an indicator of outflow driven mechanisms. And you can see the dry air up there above 600 millibars. So that will make its way down to the surface. And another factor is the poor anvil level relative shear. You can see that the photograph is not stretched out off to the right, which means a lot of the precip will be deposited on the growing cells. See, there's the storm vector right there, and it's just beneath all these other vectors for the anvil. So that's going to be a problem right there. So even if we did get strong storms, they would tend to be HP-ish. And the clock is ticking as I put this together. You can see some of the first storms going up around, looks like just east of Dodge City, maybe near Pratt. That's going to eventually move up towards the Great Bend area. Those are some good towers. So that's probably going to be the tail end activity. Meanwhile, I'm over here in the nonlinear editor. Try not to take too long because I know a lot of you want to see this video as soon as possible. So let me keep rolling along and point out a few more things and we'll get this posted. That other thing I wanted to point out was the very strong polar system sweeping into Central Europe along this cold front. Very easy to pick that out. Normally, they're not quite this strong. And you can see snow showers back there in southern Germany, up through central Poland and back into Lithuania and Latvia. And back behind it, 516 decameter thicknesses. That is quite a cold punch, and that has originated up from the polar areas. It's just, it's just been advected directly south. And these are some of the model-derived temperatures that we saw early this morning. Basically, these zeros and ones, those are 32 to 34 degrees, which is unusual for April. And even a few minus two to minus four, that's going to be 25 uh, to 28 degrees Fahrenheit in southern Germany. And lots of 30 to 32 degree readings in the UK. And for afternoon highs, looks like uh, pretty much lower 40s in a lot of regions. And then overnight lows for tonight, dropping once again back down into the lower 30s and upper 20s. And going back to Friday's model, you can kind of see how that came together. We had the strong system moving out of Iceland. And just to the west of there, very strong northerly flow. This is uh, early Sunday. And there you can see that cold front moving into Scotland during the day on Sunday and just driving southeastward, producing thunder snow in Germany. And you can see all that extensive snow shower activity across the relatively warmer North Sea. So anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. If you want to check that out, head to some of the model sites like Pivotal Weather or Tropical Tidbits. 
Anyway, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll get this edited and uploaded. And hopefully we'll see you all tomorrow. I want to thank our new Patreon supporter, Amanda Wood. Welcome to the family. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.